What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realty 60 m it's episode number 103 and we start this episode with our fixture for November as you can see match days 4 and 5 in the Champions League both for the new Camp are home to Ajax and Celtic to get a chance to qualify with games to spare a huge game against Sociedad at the top of the table including Villarreal at the end of the month as well they're also right now high flying and Real Betis away from home as well all five games coming in today's episode of course coming to the first game uh, Ajax at home on the back of our first loss of the season one of free has already gone i talked about it in episode 100 one of these three things needed to happen this season either an undefeated season a new points record in la liga or the treble otherwise after all the money we spent close to a billion pounds in two seasons i'd call this campaign a failure yes domestic double last year was great bringing some silverware back to new camp but come on with this star studded barcelona team the depth we've got as well surely one of those three things should be achievable well unfortunately one of those three things has already gone yes that defeat to madrid uh, atletico madrid i should say does mean obviously now we will not be having an undefeated season but taking an eye to the first of the five games in today's episode here heading into this one if we were to win this one and buy leverkusen to beat celtic in the other fixture that would mean that we were guaranteed qualification with two games to spare so start off with the intent of qualifying with those two games to go Bill Bauer Teta gave us the lead talked about him a lot in the last episode I don't care if VA keep on decreasing his attributes temporarily couldn't care less man this guy's still gonna get the game time in this team so I love him so much uh, I actually would level it after a lovely passing move and then just after the restart Leandro makes it 2-1 and gets us back in front. He's been decent since coming in from Crystal Palace. He's been all right, but at 90 over, I'm hoping for a few more goals uh, between now and the end of the season. But 57 minutes in, we get ourselves a two-goal Christian Usman Dembele smacking one in at the near post and making it 3-1. And this was a much tougher game then it might well have appeared. This goal, of course, gave us the two-goal cushion. That made it 2-1. Then just a couple minutes later, probably right from kickoff, really. Then Belly wins the ball back. Ferran Torres holds it up. Great ball out wide to Pedro Porro. Running through, one-on-one, -on -one, bearing down a goal. But holds up, finds Pedro. Quick little offload, Nez Dembele with the fork. So three goals in the space of 15 minutes in the second half. That gave us that three-goal cushion, made it 4-1. But this was this was a much tougher game than the scoreline suggests. And again, directly after that, Ajax kind of like capitulated in the second half because as Bill Balotelli finds Pedro Porro here and he gets his first goal since that lengthy seven-month ACL from last season to make it 5-1 and wrap up the points in style. This was one of those games where the scoreline was kind of deceptive. This was a much tougher game than you might realise, man. Yes, we got the big win. Yes, as you'll see, because Bayer Leverkusen did beat Celtic, that's guaranteed qualification with two games to spare. Though top spot is still up for grabs. But that was a tough game. And Ajax in the first half in particular played really well. Could have gone in front, actually, had it not been for a smart save from Ter Stegen around 30 minutes in. But we get the win. That's the most important thing and again two games to go and we've already guaranteed qualification i mentioned it before and i know it sounds really obvious when i say this so please don't make fun of me too much because i know it sounds really obvious but the more wins you pick up quickly the better and i know that just sounds like a really silly thing to say because it's obvious right but it's true in european qualification in the group stages the quicker you can guarantee uh, qualification and knockout stages, the better it is. Because you want to know that going into the final two games, first, there's no pressure on you. Yes, top spot might be up for grabs, but you know the most important thing, getting out of the group, has been achieved. But again, it also means because there's so many fixtures to play in November and in particular December when the final CL game comes. If you know you don't need to get a result in the final game, you can rest all your players. No, you've got so many midweek games coming in December. It's a real boost to your chances of staying Staying competitive in the league as also in the Champions League as well not having tired legs and of course reducing the risk of injuries as well still the second game of this episode uh, this was a really interesting one Real Sociedad at home of course lost our last game to Atletico Madrid in La Liga so I wanted to go back to winning ways here back in the new camp can only manage a goal destroyer though Sociedad right now second place in La Liga as they keep the gap on us at the same amount of points and they defended really well in that game really valiant sort of like lockdown defense uh, from Real Sociedad and you know obviously last season we've talked about it we kind of just walked to the title pretty quickly. Yes, there was a brief period of time where I was thinking maybe, just maybe, we might let the likes of Atletico Madrid back into it. But to be honest, we were never really in too much danger of losing our lead at the top of the table. Once we got into double digits, it was basically done. So around like February, March time, we were sitting there thinking, to be honest, here, unless we have a monumental collapse, this title is definitely going to be ours. Of course, I bottled the new points record uh, on the final day. No, sorry, I, bought, I bottled the joints points record on the final day, only managing a draw against that Real Sociedad side. But yeah, goal is draw there. And I, just, I feel like this season, it will be more competitive in La Liga. And in a weird way, 
I kind of want that as well. Yes, the undefeated season is gone. There is a chance at a new points record this season, of course, but I kind of want it to be more competitive this year after last season's kind of routine domestic double. So... Yeah, that goal is draw there proves it probably will be more challenging this year. But against Real Batiste, this was not much of a challenge. Just one win in our last three games and none in our last two in La Liga. Needed to go out to where we were twinning ways here and we would uh, as well. Leandro grabbed our first and Pedro Porro grabbed our second to make it 2-0. And then Cucurella makes it free. 30 minutes to go, points already in the back. What a ball this was to Leandro, by the way. Absolutely inch perfect and a finish to match as well. And, you know, I mentioned him just briefly a moment ago there. This guy, this guy's finishing stat when we signed him was 76, and of course that's not the highest. He is naturally a centre forward by trade, and not an out-and-out -out striker, if you will. But I gave him the number nine jersey, and whilst his link-up players, you'll see in the build-up for this goal here, getting a hockey assist for for Antora's first goal for the club, is really good. I do want to turn him in to a pure goal scorer as well as a provider as well, making a complete package. Don't forget he's six foot two. If I can get the, the medium attacking work rate up to high, if I can increase the finishing as well. I think this guy will literally be the complete striker in the game. And that's what I'm looking for from a youth player. You know, that's what we need in this. Hey, we've been waiting for it for so long. But Leandro seems like he could well be this star. But uh, still, big win there against Batiste. And then the penultimate game uh, of today's episode. This was the penultimate game of the group against Celtic. Uh, as well, of course, won the reverse fixture on match day one away in Scotland. So heading to this one, as we know, qualification in the bag. But if Bayer Leverkusen would win uh, in their game against Ajax, and of course, that will mean going to the final day, we might need at least a point depending on how this result will go here against Celtic in order to qualify as group winners so taking on the Scottish side here fast start to the game looking in control just couldn't break the deadlock you know those are the games which can be so frustrating when you're on top like every single attack you go forward you seem like you're going to score but you just can't break the deadlock but six minutes to go before the break we would do that Moise Keane sent through down the right hand side saw the goalkeeper drifting off his line and if you do that in FIFA nowadays it is just game over because chip shots are so accurate as we know they tend to always hit the target as long as you get the trajectory right you don't need to worry about whether it goes left or right it barely ever falls wide of the post but also if you've got a man to the back stick you know those classic sweaty cutback goals are always on for you as well no that was like a that was like an alternative obscure sweat goal there crossing to the back not a simple pass or through with fatty makes it one nil and then 18 minutes to go a chance to make it two which we would do for antor is a second in two uh for his new side gives us a very comfortable two in a victory probably should have won by more to be fair but wins the most important thing that doesn't mean as well as by Leverkusen be Ajax on match day five away in the Netherlands, heading into the final game away at the Bayer Arena. Uh, due to the goal difference swing as well, Bayer Leverkusen will need to win by three or more goals in order to be uh, group winners. Otherwise, if we draw, if we win, then we guarantee top spot. But even if we lose by one or two nil scoreline, that will still see us top the group. So you're on the final game. I'll rotate, if not all on my side, then certainly the vast majority of it heading into the final game because, again, qualification was already in the bag, two games to spare, but top spot is looking increasingly likely now. And I know I said it earlier, it sounds stupid and it sounds silly when I say it, but this is the importance of racking up those wins really, really quickly. Heading into that final game, that's coming in a really busy period. We've got like four games in a space of 10 days. To be able to rotate practically my entire side for that trip to Germany, very beneficial. No, we won't have too many tired legs for the games in La Liga. But uh, still, for the final game of today's episode one, uh, episode, uh, this is another big one here. Villarreal, the new camp right now in third place. You saw the table heading into the game as well. It's really tight. It's really, really tight. Sociedad out to a great start. Villarreal off to a great start. Very surprised that once again, Ariel Clasco rivals Real Madrid are not having a great start to the season, just like last season. But I didn't think this would be a routine game. And it didn't start that way either. We had the first chance, good save. But straight from that, Villarreal come on the break. And Karim Adeyemi, who is such a fantastic young forward in this year's FIFA. If you haven't tried him before, definitely do recommend it. He can play on the wings as an inside forward inverted winger or directly up top as well. Very, very agile, really good player to use. But he made it 1 0 for Villarreal. The visit took a, I wouldn't call it a shock lead, but a surprise lead. But we would level it 15 minutes before the break. You know, I mentioned the wide midfielders in this team is so crucial to our tactical setup, and they really are. Mark Ucarello and Pedro Porro back in the team now from that lengthy injury. So, so important. Mark makes it 1 1, puts us back. 
back on level terms and two minutes before the break we flip the script and get ourselves in front Dembele crossing to the back stick and there's Ansu Fati to get his 10th of the season and less said about the celebration the better that's that Homer Simpson celebration you know with, with Mel Gibson I can't remember the episode they're making a film together I think and he just goes on the table and it's like whoop 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 <laughs> anyway Fati makes it 10th uh, of the season uh, two ones he's looking to retain the golden boot he won last year and then 14 minutes after the restart a chance to extend our lead to 2 and make it 3-1 Leandro sent through one on one and again this guy's definitely picked it up scored two on his uh, debut then after that none in a few games but now that's 10 for the season for Leandro joining Fatty in double digits as we make it 3-1 and get ourselves to victory as well that's how the game will finish we turn the game on its head win it by three goals to one so we do remain top of the table we do remain top of our CL group it's been a fantastic start but it's not been plain sailing we look at the table here only three points clear of Atletico Madrid five clear of Sociedad and nine clear of Villarreal are still a long way to go as approached the halfway season and I just have a feeling this year it's going to be a lot more competitive than it was last season but that was this episode of the Riddle CM guys a big thank you for watching hope you have enjoyed it and if you have then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and I will see you for the next episode of the Riddle CM very soon